The one thing I hear from a lot of wrestling fans that the solution to John Cena's problem is that he should turn heel. Now I, along with other wrestling fans out there, believe that that is not the solution for John Cena. Why? Because, well, he is still considered a big draw when it comes to merchandising, drawing in kids, and also getting to be in appearances for Make-A-Wish Foundation and other types of charities. So yeah, he is pretty much the poster boy of the WWE. And another reason why it wouldn't work is because the moment John Cena ever turns heel again, people are gonna love it. The whole point of turning heel or being a heel is to get people to hate you, not to love you. And yes, I know wrestling is choreographed and fake and that we have to look at the character development and whatnot of why we like these types of characters, but again, you're supposed to hate the heel, not adore the heel or love the heel. Yes, adore their performance, but not go as far as to say, oh, he's one of the good guys now because he's doing this and that now. That doesn't make you a successful heel. And him turning heel at this stage of the game would not work. Now, one of the most popular rebuttals to this is, well, Hulk Hogan turned heel and it worked for him. Well, there's a difference between Hulk Hogan turning heel and John Cena turning heel. The main reason why Hulk Hogan turning heel worked in WCW at the time, it was because no one expected it and nobody wanted it to happen. I mean, think about it. For those of us who grew up watching Hulk and running wild, you know, train, say your prayers, eat your vitamins, the man that defended America from guys like the Iron Sheik and Sergeant Star when he was the Iraqi sympathizer, and also body slamming Andre the Giant, we all believed that this guy would never turn heel or never become a bad guy because we all believed that he was the ultimate good guy. And he was. And those of us who actually were born before Hulkman was on trial, yes, he was healed before, and really good heel at the time with Freddie Blassie, or whether it's the Mouth of the South Jimmy Hart. But at the same time, when we saw him in this big, huge metamorphosis into the guy that we all know and love back in the 80s, we never want even want to think of the possibilities of him turning evil or turning bad one of these days. But then in WCW, it did happen. And guess what? No one saw it coming. No one even expected it to happen. We all thought that he was gonna come in and help out Sting and Macho Man against the NWO. And then it turns out he was actually one of the members of, actually founding members of the NWO. It really crushed a lot of our hearts. It crushed my heart when I heard about it and saw it from my own eyes at the time. And to show how realistic and how heart-wrenching it was, we saw people actually trying to jump over the railing and try to beat up Hulk Hogan for what he did and all the trash people were throwing into the ring because no one wanted it to happen. No one expected it and it really hurt a lot of people's hearts. Now after a while, yes, people started to love the NWO Hulk Hogan and NWO in general, but the bottom line was at that very instance of when he turned heel, it was surprising at the time and no one saw it coming. And that's why people, till this day, consider this heel turn as one of the greatest heel turns in professional wrestling history. And I'll go over another perfect example. Stone Cold Steve Austin. Yes, he was one of the greatest heels before he became Stone Cold Steve Austin, the guy who is anti-establishment, the anti-hero, the guy that doesn't take crap from anybody, not even Vince McMahon. We saw him as the ultimate anti-hero, tweener face, good guy kind of thing you get what I'm saying but then we never even saw this coming where he shook hands with the devil himself Vincent Mann at Wrestlemania 17 we didn't saw this coming we didn't want it to happen but it did and it pissed a lot of people off even myself and then granted yes later on people started to grow on him they actually found him more entertaining being the kiss ass for Vincent Mann but the bottom line is the initial reaction of that heel turn really spoke volumes because we didn't expect it and we didn't want it. Bottom line guys, an ex a successful heel turn is when you don't expect it and when you don't want it. Yeah, there are times where we do expect it, but at the same time, we don't want it at the same time and vice versa. But that is what makes the best heel turn and speaks the most volumes. Not the ones that we expect and not the ones that we want. And John Cena turning heel, guess what? It's not gonna work. 
It's not gonna be heart-wrenching. It's not gonna be like say, oh my god, this is gonna speak volumes. Yes, for a while it'll speak volumes because WWE finally pulled the trigger to have him turn heel, but with the initial reaction is, yay, he turned heel. That will be the initial reaction rather than, oh my god, I can't believe he did that. What do you guys think about what I said about turning heel, the purposes of turning heel, and the timing and the reason for turning heel? Do you agree or disagree? And feel free to tell me your favorite um, heel turn moment in professional wrestling, not just in WWE, but in wrestling in general. Feel free to leave your comments down below, tell me what you guys think, and we'll go discuss and debate about it. Alright guys, take care.